Hi, my name's Jordan Burrs, and I'm going to be your host for the entire FIFA World Cup 2022. Before we dive into my No House Advantage picks, make sure you're subscribed to the Odd Shoppers channel because we drop daily predictions, daily previews, and No House Advantage videos every single day. So make sure you're subscribed. Before we dive into this video, I need to tell you about No House Advantage. They have two types of contests over there. One, which allows you to pick overs and unders and enter them into a GPP style tournament. The other, which we'll be talking about today, are props over and under picks, which allow you to multiply your winnings of up to 20x. Now, you can either use code STOCHASTIC for your first deposit bonus of up to $50. That's code STOCHASTIC for your first deposit bonus of up to $50. Or you can click the link in the description or it'll be pinned to the first comment. Now, let me show you a little bit of how No House Advantage works. These are all the games going on today. As you can see, we have Cameroon versus Switzerland, Korea, South Korea versus Uruguay, Portugal versus Ghana, and Brazil versus Serbia. So just for an example, let's say we just do these picks. If you go down to the bottom here, you'll see that it gets up to 5x. We've got three players here. We've picked overs and unders, depending on what they've given us. For, for this example, it's passes. And as you can see, if you pick more players your multiplier increases therefore you win more but it is more difficult to hit those picks the uh the less players that you have the easier it is to hit but your payout won't be as much so you'll see if we put a hundred dollars in here we get five hundred dollars out if we get all of those picks right now we do need to chat about these games and about some of these players that i think are quite look quite promising in my opinion in the Cameroon-Switzerland game, we do know that Switzerland played a friendly or warm-up game against Ghana and ended up losing that game 2-0. So Cameroon will come into this game and they'll think that they can take on the Swiss side. Ikambi might be in the goals. Granit Xhaka is going to try and hold down the defense for Switzerland at the back. Akanji, a Man City player, will also be a vital key in that Switzerland team. To be honest with you, Switzerland should be winning this. <clears throat> Sorry. To be honest with you, Switzerland should be winning this game. However, Cameroon will back themselves to upset them. We saw what Saudi Arabia did to Argentina. We saw what Japan did to Germany yesterday. Anything is possible in a World Cup. And because of this uncertainty of this result, yes, Switzerland should win it. But they did just lose to Ghana. Cameroon aren't as good as Ghana. But I would, I would rather just stay away from this game. There are better picks that we can take from the remaining three games. Then the next game we need to look at is Uruguay taking on South Korea. Now, South Korea are definitely dark horses within that group, being Uruguay, Korea, Portugal, and Ghana. But I do think they'll probably end fourth or third. I don't think they're going to qualify for the knockout stages. Now, the big talking point for South Korea was whether Son was going to start. It does look like he's starting. He might just have to wear a face mask to protect his broken cheek. Now, I, I'm not going to go into much depth with Son. I would have liked a shooting um, bet here, but they've only given us passes. And for me, I'm just not sure how much ball Son is going to get against this Uruguay side. So I'd rather look at the Uruguay players. Now, Uruguay have the, um, have the experience of Suarez and Cavani and the explosiveness of Darwin Nunez up front. But Valverde... The, the midfielder for Uruguay is also very, very dangerous. In La Liga, he averages 2.2 shots per game and he averages one on target. Now for, Argent uh, for Uruguay, I beg your pardon, in World Cup qualifiers, he's averaged 1.6 shots and he's averaged 0 0.6 on target. I think Valverde is definitely going to be in the game here. He's going to try feed the ball into Suarez and Nunez. I think he's also going to probably have a couple of shots, and I wouldn't be surprised if he comes away with a goal. So for me, we're going to back the stats here as well as I think Uruguay is going to get quite a few goals against the South Korean side. So I'm going over for Valverde. Then we move into the Portugal versus Ghana game. Now, this is the game that I've called an upset in. I do think Ghana could probably win this. I think it's going to end in a 1-1 draw, which then helps the fact to go under for some of these players. Cristiano Ronaldo, for instance, will be the talisman for this Portuguese side up front. Is he in good form or not? We're not sure. He hasn't played for Man United that much lately. Also, with all this drama around him, I'm just wondering how it's going to affect the Portuguese camp and whether he's, e he's either going to come out very, very hot or he's not going to come out hot at all. For me, I think Ghana have a good side, a very, very underrated African side. I do think Ghana could upset Portugal here. Yes, Portugal just beat uh, Nigeria 4-0. 
But I would not be surprised if Ghana take this one. Three and a half shots for Cristiano Ronaldo seems a lot to me. In Ronaldo in the Nations League, only averaged 1.8 shots for Portugal. So I think that's quite a lock at the under. Again, I'm not sure what Cristiano Ronaldo is going to do. He probably will be on penalties. So hopefully Ghana don't give away too many penalties. But I can't see him getting more than three and a half shots here. So we're definitely going to lock that in at the under. Then another player in the Ghana-Portugal game that we're looking at, that's not Portuguese, is Inaki Williams. He's come from Spain to join this Ghana team. And he's been very, very dangerous in La Liga for Atletico Bilbao. I do think Ghana are going to have the opportunities. Portugal do, do give away one, two, three, maybe even four opportunities to teams that are, they're playing against. Ghana is in form. They're dangerous. And with the history built into this group with Ghana and Uruguay, Ghana will desperately want to get out of the knockout stages here. I do think Inaki Williams is going to have quite a few chances. One and a half shots doesn't seem like that much to me. Um, he does average a slightly over one and a half shots in La Liga. And I just think with, um, with Tariq Lamptey coming up the wing with Party in the midfield, I just really think that Inaki Williams can get the over here. So for me, I'm going to lock in the over for Inaki Williams. Banking on either that Ghana draw, maybe a 1-1, 2-2 draw, or the Ghana win. Even if Ghana don't win, I still think this is a good bet. Inaki Williams finds himself in good positions up front there. He'll probably be on penalties, so anything can happen, and I think he's definitely going to get over one and a half shots. I'm not going to mess around with these passes. The passes are very, very difficult to predict, so I don't like betting on the passes, but I do like betting on the shots. The last player that I've identified for us to speak about is Dusan Vlahalvik. Now, I would have loved if Alexander Mitrovic was here. It does seem from the predicted lineups that Mitrovic will start. We know he's been dealing with an injury that he picked up at Fulham in the Premier League, but all, all signs indicate that Mitrovic will be starting, which makes me look at the 0.5 shots on goal for Dusan Vlahalvik. Now, make sure you just check the lineups before kickoff. I do think even if Vlahalvik doesn't start, he will come off the bench for 10, 15 minutes, um, sort of become that impact player. And if he comes off the bench, I would definitely hammer the under here. I'm not sure how much space uh, this Brazilian team are going to give these big Serbian forwards. I think they're going to press them very, very hard and try and not let them take a lot of shots. So if he's coming off the bench, I definitely go over. Ugh, under, sorry. If he's starting, if, if news comes out that Mitrovic is not starting for the Serbian team, I would definitely go for the over for Dusan Vlahalvik. He finds himself in good positions, and throughout 90 minutes, he'll definitely get more than 0.5 shots on goal. So for me, I'm going to stick with the under because I do think he's going to start on the bench. But again, use your own discretion. Check the lineups. I'm going to stay away from all these Brazilians just because there's nothing that really tickles my fancy over here. And as you can see at the bottom, we've got all the way up to the 11x. So if we put $100 in here, our payout would be $1,100. Again, guys, that is No House Advantage. Make sure you click the link in the description to earn your first deposit bonus of up to $50. You can also use code STOCHASTIC to get your first deposit bonus of up to $50. If you haven't subscribed to the Odd Shoppers channel, make sure to do so now. We drop daily predictions, previews, and no-house advantage videos. My name's Jordan Burrs, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.